Welcome to Peg and Rob's Big Adventure. Hi, I'm Peg. And I'm Rob. And together we decided to give up work and pursue our passion for travel. At the end of June 22, we left our home in Port Sunlight to live full time in our motorhome. This is a video diary of our journey. And we'd love it if you could join us on our travels. Last week, we watched dogs cooling off, oh. Spanish style. <laughs> the circus came to town. Well, it came to our air, actually. We dealt with yet another problem with our motorhome. So under no circumstances should you ever do this. And Rob decided that after all the issues that I needed a treat. An extra special treat for Peg. <laughs> Ooh, he's taking me out out. And finally we observed a Larabatsu tradition. Oh, and oh, this is it. And they're off. And they're off. OK, I'm not sure what's going on. The, the klaxon has been sounded. There's a mad rush for the tables. And stay at a lovely free air in Basque territory. This time, welcome to Rob's rant of the week. It was a genuine mistake. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it happened. Okay, we're in a delightful air tonight. Um, it's not at all where we expect it to be. No. Somebody, um, this isn't a witch hunt, somebody, Entered the incorrect coordinates into the sat nav. Pegged as a runner from the restaurant. And we nearly get crushed in Nantes. And we're about to get crushed. So we're going to have to move. <laughs> Introduce you to my friend Jackie, and here she is. I was chatting away to her as we were stuck in a traffic jam waiting to cross the border to France. We're at our new air for the night. Yes. It's a paid one at about eight euros, it's by a lake. We're about 56 miles south of Bordeaux. So we're now back in France, and... You think it's saint eu le <laughs> Easy for me to say, saint eu le du bon. Um, but we'll put it in writing so you can see how it should be pronounced. Sorry for massacring the uh, French language. The reality is we don't know where we are, but we're somewhere by it's a lake. It's beautiful. It's really nice. The weather now is down to about 20, just in the low 20s. Nice little breeze, and we're really enjoying it. Just had ca cafe au lait um, and an ice cream. And an ice cream, very Life nice. Is good. Yeah, you go swimming in the lake here. There's, you can hire um, paddle, boards, paddle boards and canoes, boats, can pedalos. So, yeah, it's it's a lovely location for the night, and it's got a nice little cafe as well where you can get crepes and coffee and ice creams. It's got a nice vibe and beer. <laughs> so I don't know what time it's open till tonight, but we'll have to find out. Not that that's the end of the world, because we now have a fridge that works. And we've got our wine chilling. The wine's chilling, the beer's chilling. We've got plenty of ice. All is good. <sighs> so this beautiful area that we stayed in for eight euros fifty a night had a harbour attached to it. There was also um, a fantastic lake. Beautiful boats coming in and out, lots of things going on that you could just sit and watch the world go by. They'd also created a beach area as well further down and there was sand on there and lots of the children were swimming in this area. Welcome to Rob's Rant of the Week. Okay, this is a new feature I've just thought of. I just want to say, why, why are some campsites charging, this is unbelievable, 50 to 60 euros a night in Europe when there's so many free, amazing airs available? I mean, yeah, I appreciate that you get extra facilities, maybe like a swimming pool, 
or, or maybe a washing machine. Of course, that's fantastic, but the free airs, you can get, they all have free water generally, free wastewater emptying and toilet emptying facilities. Some even have free electric. I just find it astonishing. 50 to 60 euros a night. I mean, that's just way too much. So we're definitely not staying in those sorts of places. In next week's episode, I'm taking a detailed look at how difficult it is to buy ice in Europe. It's something that I'm extremely passionate about and I just can't believe the number of supermarkets we've been in where they tell you, oh no, we don't sell ice. I, I just, I can't get my head around that. I mean, anything above 25 to 30 degrees, I mean, it's, it's a lifesaver. So I'll bring you the full results of the analysis that I've been doing in the various supermarkets throughout France, Spain and Portugal something I think you'll find quite interesting next week. Anyway, I'll leave the final word to Peg. You won't. <laughs> and on that note, I say thank you for listening and see you next week. We were treated to an absolutely magnificent sunset that evening, which was the picture of serenity. What we haven't recorded for you was the open air disco that went on till one o'clock in the morning services are everything you'd expect and here we're just filling with water and emptying our grey waste before leaving for our next destination. There's a nice view of the harbour while you're refilling with water. what Rob ordered by mistake. It was a genuine mistake. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it happened, but I guess I'm just going to have to eat them. We thought it was the wrong order when we came over and he went, it's on your ticket. Hmm. <laughs> Whenever I go shopping, wherever it is, regardless of which country it's in, you can be certain that I've picked the wrong till to queue at. Nothing different here to anywhere else, the world over. We had what I would call a semi-structured approach to planning our big trip. We have a spreadsheet with all the fixed dates on it, such as meeting up with family. We book campsites in advance for these, or plan airs with a plan B well in advance. In between our major stop-offs, we have a more relaxed approach and often only decide on that day which air we're gonna to head towards. Sometimes we have a plan B, sometimes we don't. We usually don't drive for more than three hours a day and so far we've always found somewhere to stay. Woohoo! I finally get the camera the right way round. Okay, we're in a delightful air tonight. Um, it's not at all where we expect it to be. No. Somebody, um, this isn't a witch hunt, somebody entered the incorrect coordinates into the sat nav and we ended up about, oh that's a bit noisy. Po apologise for that. Yeah, somebody entered the incorrect coordinates into the sat nav and we've ended up 50 miles away from our destination. Was it the Wicked Witch of the East or the Wicked Witch of the West? No names will be mentioned. 
Um, but anyway, we've entered, we came to this delightful place uh, for the night. It looks really nice. Um, we haven't explored it yet, we don't know a lot about it. But uh, there's even electricity at this air. You do have to pay for it, and we're just going to try and figure out how it all works now. We can either get 8 hours, 12 hours, or 24. I would say 12. So we're going for 12 hours electricity. Outlet 2. Next. Please look away now while I put my card in. Payment, Payment accepted. accepted. Down so there. We should get something. Code OK accepted. Treatment in progress. So how much electricity have we got, Peg? We've got... Um, we've got a code. Yeah, so it tells us we've got 12 hours. So you probably go into that code somewhere to... Yeah. Don't show, don't look, please don't look at the code on the camera. <laughs> we'll try and figure this out where that code's now got to go. I mean, we've turned up quite late, I might add. It must be what, quarter past half past eight in the evening. Look, there's a little glimpse of the church. But what facilities? Somewhere to wash. What more can I say? And the church for a second time. Oh, sorry, have you done it? We've done the church. Peg would like you to see the church. And this lovely place over here. Yeah. Tennis courts. And something going. Lovely feeling of space. Yeah. I'm sure. They've got the bunting out. The bunting is out. This air was conveniently located for the shops. There was a boulangerie just outside the gate and a supermarket not much further away. That's it with my casinos. Oh it is, it's yeah, it's the well-stocked supermarket. still in this village, we decided to stay for two nights, the one where we ended up by accident because of the incorrect coordinates in the sat-nav, and we'll buy this lovely little water feature, and if we had something relevant to say, this would be just the spot to do it. This is a little village of historic interest, it's got an abbey and it's got um, an old mill in it as well, and we're going to look round both of them, and I don't know if the water feature in the background is a bit of a disturbance for the sound. We'll find out later, but for now, it's time for a crepe. If for no other reason, it's worth coming here just for the crepe, right? Well, I don't know that yet, but that's why I'd come. <laughs> okay, um, this is great, got the restaurant to ourselves and the biggest menu the biggest menu I've ever been given at any restaurant. Cheers. We had this place to ourselves when we first came in. Look at it now. When we got here, we had the choice of eating inside or outside. We chose inside. We, we, I think we might have made the right decision. It is absolutely hammering it down with rain here. And, and the outside is leaking like anything. We're just in there, but we've got to go all the way round. This is Peg running. It's absolutely hammering it down. We're so through. We've been out about five seconds. Look at that. It's unbelievable. Jeff, Jeff. Look at that. He's bouncing off the car park. We're absolutely drenched. 
We love it. We baked in 40 degree heat for about four weeks. So good. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, that's the, the rain streaming down the front through the front windscreen. We've just run back from the crepery where it cost 43 euros. So we had basically a, a crepe for starter. We had a crepe for our main course. We had a galette for our main course. And we had a crepe for a pudding. And we had a beer. I had a grand beer, a large one. Peg had a petite beer, a smaller one. And that came to 43 euros. Plus we were very generous to get five euro tip. So two euros change out of 50. It was lovely, but it did draw to our attention how much cheaper it is in Spain than France. To be honest, I'm enjoying the food in France, but you pay a lot more for it. Um, Spain was incredibly cheap. We, we, we have paid a euro for a beer. I think this was, how much was this here? Six euros? Six euros for the large, Six for the large beer 350 here. 350 for a small. Whereas in Spain, we have paid a euro for a small. So it's quite interesting that it's a lot more expensive here. But we've really enjoyed it, so that's fine. We just got this from Eclair yesterday. It's a plastic cafetiere, something we've been hankering after for the last few weeks. The entry fee to the restored water mill was five euros. This mill was built in 1728 and still produces tons of flour for the local boulangeries to bake bread with. It also produces buckwheat flour for pancakes. The mill explains how a mill works and you can look around the preserved miller's house. Grass is always greener, eh? That's the sound of thunder and lightning we've got here today. I love the sound of the rain on the motorhome route. I don't know if they can hear you above the noise. You probably can't hear us, but it's almost deafening. The sound of the rain and the thunder. we have for just over a euro a machine that gives baguettes 24 hour baguette the Vendée region is known for its long coastline and sandy beaches but there are also some jewels of places worth visiting that are inland the abbey was founded in 1068 and it's beautiful it's of exceptional architectural quality it's linked to Eleanor of Aquitaine's mother. She's known to have visited and stayed there, and it's also rumoured that Eleanor herself was born there.
<laughs> here's John. Here's John. How do you do? And Jackie. Hi. And it's an absolute pleasure to meet you both. Thank you. And your classic motorhome, a fabulous, amazing condition Heimer. What year was it, John? 93. A 93 Heimer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. With your beer. With your, with your beer. Here's John with his beer. He can't he can't have his lunch till he's had his beer and you know that's fair enough. So John has just given me a tour of his Heimer and it is in immaculate condition. Absolutely beautiful. So four four point six tons, John. Four point six maximum. Yeah. Very slow. <laughs> and what's your maximum speed? Uh, we, we, I drive it at uh, about 47 to 50. Right. Yes, traffic calming. <laughs> traffic calming speed. <laughs> so John takes safety uh, very seriously, especially in France. Mm. Just a quick look in, very similar to our Niesman. Same quality workmanship. Absolutely beautiful. And there's a classic on the front. One of the early reversing cameras still works. It's a black and white screen. You live on a boat. Live on a boat. Which is currently based in Devizes. Devizes. That's Fantastic. our sort of base. Yeah. Um, and we're starting to explore now. The bits we couldn't get to. By boat. Or by boat, we're starting to explore. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Well, so Jackie, how is it living in a Heimer compared to living on a boat? The same. You know, small spaces. Um, I prefer the boat. Yeah. At the moment. At the moment. But this is early days because you've yes. only recently just, had yes. your home. Yes. Yeah. Um, but now I'm. Yeah, I think I think they're the same really. Yeah, small space. Because it's the same. Your water, your gas, yes. and all those yeah. sorts of yeah. things. Keep tidy. Yeah. Keep yeah. everything same. tidy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same challenges yes. Yes. that we all have. Yeah, you know, putting a gas bottle in, filling all, up with water, filling up with water. That's yeah. all the same yes. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just on water instead of on you the road. You can get to more places, obviously, in the Heimer. Yeah, more flexible. Yes, mm. yeah. yeah. So when you're on the canal, you basically go to. Yeah. Well, we went to Ellesmere Port, yeah. and then we got the ferry across. Oh. Um, so that, there is, there is that you can take mostly anywhere, couldn't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I'm looking at my leg, which is very wet, it's because of the way that the water is dispensed from here. Our pitch has got its own water supply, but there's no on off switch. You basically, <laughs> as soon as you're hooked up to the water, it's coming. I'm not looking forward to stopping it coming out again. I suspect I might be getting wet again. Anyway, it's working now, wet leg and all and we'll just see how much we've got in okay we can see how much water we've got in that is a rocket fuel gin rocket fuel gin from peg which <laughs> i need let's see what the water's like oh three quarters full so we're almost there um i might go and stop it because we can easily get more water get right i'm gonna get soaked again tomorrow okay time to stop brace yourself The only way to stop this is somehow to pull it out. Oh, that's how you do it. Well, that was easier than I expected. I've got a very wet leg. Uh, cheers, Peg. <laughs> You've had a challenging journey to get here. It's been very challenging, and this is a much needed gin. little gin. Whop off gin. Mm. Cheers. What a journey. I mean, that was one of the most challenging journeys we've had. We had two sat navs on the go, Google Maps and a Garmin. Neither were aware that roads had been closed on the way into Nantes. Probably took us about an hour to figure it all out. There's, we had to get across the river, 
there was, I think there was only one way in the end. Somehow we managed to figure it out. Um, and can't believe we're actually here before it all closed for the night, so. Uh, Lots of gin required. Fueled by gin. washing and drying. There's a convenient metro from just outside the campsite into Nantes. Machine Day Eel. Last time we were here, there was literally nobody here. Rob and I just walked in, got a ticket. We didn't know what we were doing, but we ended up going on the big elephant. Today, it's absolutely heaving with people. The whole area looks a lot more developed, and there's no tickets available. Yeah. Last time we came on a Saturday, and it was very straightforward to get on. So the whole area, as Peg says, They've developed it significantly and it's now very popular. Very busy. Very busy. But it is middle of August, so yeah. I guess that's to be expected. Okay, you might see in the background there's a real live mechanical elephant. Last time we came here, must be 12, 13 years ago, there was nothing like this. We had a ride on it and we just literally came and got tickets, got straight on. Now it's a massive, massive um, tourist attraction. There's loads of people here. It's great fun. And we're about to get crushed. So we're going to have to move. <laughs> Back in a minute. <laughs> to be 23 degrees today it feels significantly hotter so we've succumbed to the temptation cheers French style. For scale, this is my hand. <laughs> this is enormous.
Petra spotted our camera and was game for a laugh. However, it doesn't look like everyone was amused. Yes. Come here. Yes. Come here. Yes. Good on you. That was amazing. Next time, if you like narrow streets and lots and lots of people combined with history, this is the place for you. This is definitely the place, Peg, isn't it? Yeah. But, wow. Uh, oh, look at that. We meet up with my old family friend. Just been informed that there's a fair across the river from where we parked tonight. It's only there temporarily, but apparently it goes on till one o'clock in the morning, and we're very much looking forward to hearing that later. And our evening goes with a bang in Chateau Gontier. If you enjoyed watching the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.